Our cells are so strong and complex that they seem to have a defense mechanism in place for all sorts of danger. Like when you catch a cold, your immune system recruits special cells to fight off the virus or bacteria. Ever wonder what methods your body has in place to prevent cancer? As we know, cancer is an uncontrollable growth and division of cells. Do you know what processes in our body control cell division? If you guess the cell cycle, then you are correct. Hi there, I'm Pooja, and these are my classmates. Hi, I'm Kajita. And I'm Solomia. We are master's students at the University of Toronto studying medical genomics, and we'd like, like to welcome you to our webinar on the intricacies of the cell cycle. In this webinar, we'll begin by reviewing the basics you might already know about the life cycle of a cell. We'll take a deep dive into each of the critical checkpoints covering normal cell division. Then we'll uncover the common malfunctions of these checkpoints that can pave the way for cancer. You'll also have an option to test your knowledge at each stage. Let's hop right in to the cell cycle basics. If you recall, the cell cycle consists of four main stages. At the beginning of the cell cycle, cells are usually held at the G0 or quiescent stage. This is a non-dividing resting state in which cells exit from active cycle and are not preparing to divide or progress. That is until they are activated for division by some sort of stimuli which can include growth factors, hormones, or even environmental changes. When the cell enters the G1 phase, it grows in size. It carries out its normal functions and prepares for DNA replication. The S phase, also known as the synthesis phase, is when the DNA replication occurs. The cell duplicates its genetic material to ensure that both daughter cells receive an identical copy of the genome. The G2 phase is where the cell continues to grow and prepare for division. Finally, the M phase is the stage where the cell physically divides. As you know, it consists of several subphases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Mitosis ensures that the duplicated chromosomes are distributed accurately between the two daughter cells. In order to ensure that the cells don't divide under unfavorable conditions, the cell has checkpoints to examine the cell and implement the proper corrective actions if necessary. The cell has many checkpoints, however, the three most important ones are the G1 checkpoint at the G1S phase transition, the G2 checkpoint at the G2M phase transition, and the spindle checkpoint at the transition from metaphase to anaphase. Let's jump in to the first checkpoint and let's take a look at its normal function. Normally, cyclin D is inhibited by a protein called P16. However, when the cell receives growth stimuli, the amount of cyclin D goes up and the cell enters the G1 phase. Cyclin D is part of a family of proteins that regulate the cell cycle. Cyclin's partner with a family of enzymes called cyclin-dependent kinases, or CDKs. By itself, CDKs are inactive, but when a cyclin binds to it, it becomes an active enzyme. Cyclin D binds to CDK4 and 6, its cyclin-dependent kinase partners. With the help of cyclin E and CDK2, these two complexes phosphorylate a tumor suppressor protein called retinoblastoma, or RB. If you recall, this means attaching a phosphate group. If you want to learn more about what a tumor suppressor is, click the link here. RB is bound to a transcription factor called E2F. However, upon phosphorylation of RB, E2F is released. E2F is responsible for regulating transcription of the S phase genes to progress to the next stage of the cell cycle. DNA damage from external factors such as UV radiation causes single-stranded DNA breaks that can turn into toxic double-stranded breaks. 
To prevent this from happening, the G1S phase checkpoint is triggered to halt progress through the cell cycle to allow for repair mechanisms to take over. DNA strand breaks are sensed by proteins called ATM and ATR. These phosphorylate their downstream targets CHK1 and CHK2. All four of these proteins target a transcription factor that is a tumor suppressor protein called P53. P53 transcribes P21. P21 inhibits the cyclin E CDK2 complex from forming, preventing retinoblastoma from getting phosphorylated and thus stopping the transcription of the S phase genes to occur and preventing transition into the S phase. Let's look at what happens when things go wrong. When mutations occur in G1S checkpoint proteins, DNA damage may not be detected, allowing damaged cells to continue through the cell cycle, possibly leading to cancer. Cancer cells often do not need external growth stimuli to trigger entry into the G1 phase like normal cells do. Cancer cells sometimes have mutations in RB leading to retinoblastoma, a childhood cancer in the eye. When RB is mutated, it takes on a different form and can no longer bind to E2F. This allows E2F to be always free to transcribe S phase genes uncontrollably leading to cancer. Now let's see if you are paying attention. Which of the following is considered the growth sensor of the cell? A. Cyclin D, B. E2F, C. P53, or D. RB. Pause the video here if you need more time. If you guess Cyclin D, that is correct. Given this pathway, what might occur if there were mutations in P21? A. Cell cycle arrest, B. Uncontrollable cell growth, C. Apoptosis, or D, return to the G0 phase. If you guess B, you are correct. Since P21 is an important factor for halting transition into the S phase upon DNA damage, without it, unhealthy cells can continue to divide. Now let's talk about the G2M checkpoint and its normal functioning. After the completion of the S phase where DNA is replicated, the cell needs to make sure that it has properly replicated all of its DNA and the DNA isn't damaged. The maturation promoting factor or MPF is a protein complex that plays a central role in the cell's progression through the G2M checkpoint. It consists of CDK1 and cyclin B. During S phase, this complex begins to form but is inactivated through phosphorylation by V1 and MIT1 protein kinase enzymes. As the cell enters into the G2 phase, CDC25B and CDC25C activate the MPF through dephosphorylation. The MPF then activates CDC25C by phosphorylating it, thus entering into a positive feedback loop causing the cell to begin mitosis. Now you may be wondering how this checkpoint ensures that all DNA has been properly replicated before mitosis. In the case that DNA has been damaged during replication, as we have seen with the G1S phase checkpoint, CHK1 and 2 and P53 are activated. P53 increases proteins that inhibit the activity of the MPF. Without MPF activity, the cycle's progression into mitosis will be prevented. CHK1 and 2 inactivate CDC25C through phosphorylation, thus also preventing entry into mitosis. You saw what happens in a normal healthy cell, but you can imagine how many things can go wrong in cancer. For example, if P53 was broken due to a mutation, the activity of the MPF wouldn't be inhibited and the cell may still proceed into mitosis, causing cell proliferation despite the DNA damage. Such a mutation may allow the accumulation of other mutations and lead to cancer. This is what happens in people with Leifermani syndrome, 
a type of heritable cancer predisposition caused by mutations in p53. Let's see if you are paying attention. Which of the following is the final step in the pathway that determines whether the cell enters into mitosis? A, a negative feedback loop that suppresses MPF activity. B, the MPF is phosphorylated. C, the positive feedback loop where the MPF and CDC25C activate each other. Or D, the MPF levels drop. If you guess C, that is correct. It is this positive feedback loop that allows cells to enter into mitosis. Given this pathway, what is likely to occur if CDC25C is broken due to a mutation? A. Cancer. B. The cell proceeds into mitosis normally. C. The cell has no way of detecting DNA damage. Or D. The cell cycle is arrested. If you answer D, that is correct. The phosphatase CDC25C is needed to activate the MPF to trigger entry into mitosis. Now let's talk about the spindle checkpoint and its normal functioning. Initially, proper chromosome alignment in metaphase and microtubule attachment to the kinetochores occurs. Recall that kinetochores are structures that spindle microtubules bind to on chromosomes. This activates a complex called APC or anaphase promoting complex, which targets a protein called securin for ubiquitination. Ubiquitination is a process by which proteins are labeled with ubiquitin molecules to be degraded. Securin normally inhibits a protein called separase, which it releases upon ubiquitination. Separase then breaks down the glue that holds the sister chromatids together, thus allowing them to separate. If there is an issue in this process, the spindle assembly checkpoint, or SAC, is activated in the transition between metaphase and anaphase. The first step in this checkpoint is the sensing of unattached kinetochores and the recruitment of checkpoint proteins, MAD and BUB, to these unattached kinetochores. These are the proteins that phosphorylate the key subunit of APC, thus inhibiting its activity. The lack of APC to inhibit securin allows for sister chromatids to remain bound together. This prevents the transition from metaphase to anaphase. Let's look at what happens when things go wrong. When the SAC proteins aren't functioning properly due to mutations, cells can detect spindle chromosome attachment issues and they mistakenly continue into anaphase. This can result in aneuploidy, which is when cells have an abnormal amount of chromosomes. Aneuploidy can contribute to the formation of tumors, including oral and colorectal cancers. Now let's see if you are paying attention. What are the roles of MAD and BUB proteins in the SAC? A. They facilitate the attachment of kinetochores to spindle microtubules. B. They activate the APC during chromosome alignment. C. They inhibit the activity of APC when microtubule attachments are defective, or D, they promote the separation of sister chromatids during mitosis. The correct answer is C. MAD and BUB proteins inhibit APC when microtubules are defective. If you had to invent a drug to stop the irregular functioning of spindle checkpoints, how would you do it? A. Arrest the cell cycle in metaphase. B. Arrest the cell cycle in anaphase. C. Slow down cell cycle functioning. Or D. Induce contact inhibition in cells. If you guessed A, then you are correct. This is the mechanism of, of action behind a class of drugs known as antimitotic agents, which arrest the cell cycle in metaphase before going into a state known as mitotic catastrophe leading to cell death. Now that we have gone through the three main cell cycle checkpoints, 
we can see how vital these guardians are to ensuring precise and regulated cell division and to initiate corrective action or halt progression through the cell cycle when issues or damage is detected. Let's hop into an overview. At the G1S phase, a cascade of events involving cyclin D, CDKs, and the tumor suppressor proteins like RB and P53 orchestrate the transition to DNA synthesis while responding to DNA damage. We saw that mutations disrupting these checkpoints, such as those seen in retinoblastoma, can lead to uncontrolled cell growth, which is a hallmark of cancer. The G2M checkpoint ensures accurate DNA replication before mitosis. Dysfunctions here caused by mutations or disruptions in the pathway controlling the MPF or proteins like P53 can result in abnormal cell division and cancer progression. The SAC ensures proper chromosome alignment and segregation. Its failure can cause aneuploidy, which can promote tumorigenesis. Understanding these checkpoints and their dysregulations sheds light on how cancers develop and their progression. Mutations or dysfunctions in these critical pathways can allow cancerous cells to evade detection and continue dividing unchecked. In summary, the complexity and precision of cell cycle checkpoints highlight the body's incredible defense mechanisms against cancer. By exploring these checkpoints and their vulnerabilities, we move closer to unraveling the mysteries of cancer development potentially opening doors to novel treatments. Thank you for joining us today on this insightful journey through the cell cycle checkpoints and their role in cancer. If you want to learn more about the cell cycle, feel free to refer to these linked resources on the screen.